So good morning. So as you remember that we started discussion on array. Greenberger array, as I told you, it is another version of normal <coughs> PLA. And this is more appropriate for funds for realization of logic from the combinational logic where some multi-level operation is involved. Multi-level operation is involved. For example, as I told you that this is a very simple example of producing the carry out of an adder in an adder, starting from A, B, the two inputs and the carry in from the last last column. And you see, for this, you have to first do the exclusive of operation of A and B, and then make a product of and operation with C I, and individually a product operation A B, and ultimately you have to sum them up to get C O, and the corresponding block schematic, the logic diagram for implementing this without any other, just from this equation, it is something like this. As I told you, that in MOS, VLSI. It is a NOR logic which is most natural. Therefore, it is simpler to use NOR functions rather than any other gates, NOR gates, in implementing logic functions in MOS logic. And therefore, I have drawn this diagram where everything has been drawn, in the, if the whole operation has been carried out using <coughs> NOR gate. There are seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven NOR gates involved. These three NOR gates produce the produces the exclusive NOR, exclusive NOR, and then combining with CI inverse and we produce this function at the output of this NOR gate. Separately, we produce AB here at, this, at, at the output of this NOR gate. I combine them through a NOR gate and again another NOR on NAND, or, or in fact it is an inverter, basically NOR gate, and we get at the output CO. I want to realize this thing exactly in the same way, and that is the approach which is used in Wienberger and not the convert the and plane or plane approach which is used in PLA. Let us see how it is done. It is more convenient, you know that there are seven, there are seven gates and therefore there should, there should be seven load transistors, okay? Seven load transistors and it is easier to draw the circuit Instead of normal circuit diagram, if we draw the stick diagram, it is easier. So let us follow this particular route. What I do, I first have the seven, sorry, seven, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes, seven um, transistors. <coughs> Here, one, Two, <coughs> three, four, five. Six and ultimately seven. I these are for meant for the get gates one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven in this diagram. So I have drawn just seven load transistors with a common VDD. So there is a common VDD. And you see how many nodes are there? There are a number of nodes. One, nodes mean both the input signals and the intermediate outputs. So there are four here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So each, each such input, because each such node goes as the input to the next gate. So what I will be doing, I will assume that these all these signals are converted to 
polylines for the sake of simplicity. All the signals are conveyed through polyline. And the outputs of each, let us see, what I will doing now, I will first draw the input lines. These are all poly. is A, this is A bar, this is B, These are all polylines. Please remember, dashed line in the stick diagram was polyline. This is B bar. Then I have got the CI. Input carry in. Then intermediately, I shall give the following names. <coughs> Whatever exactly I have done here, I will call it G, this is H, this node is H, this is I, this is J, this is K. <laughs> These are the names I am giving, the intermediate nodes. So G, H, I, J, K exactly that I will do. Signal here, though it is, it will produce A bar B, but I, this node I will be calling G. Please put in your diagram. I think you brought the diagram. <coughs> last class diagram. Put this numbers G, <coughs> put this um, symbol G, H, I, J, K in the respective nodes okay this is g ah, so ci bar i am applying ci bar so i'll put ci bar right this is h It's a very dense diagram and it may be difficult for you to view, but I don't think it will be that difficult. It is just a, so please note that this is G line, this is H line, this is I, this is J. This is K, and I have, I think, that output bar. <coughs> CO bar, and the last line is CO. From this last line, I will get the output, OK? Please remember these are all polysilicon lines, which is normally used as inputs to in the various, in the in, in VLSI, MOS VLSI. Then I will use a number of, you know, columns, which are nothing but metal lines, metal lines. So it will be like this. I have not shown, I could have shown these transistors also using stick diagram, but I have not done it. So you could draw it yourself. So this is one metal line. Should I use, what was the color for the metal? Or anyway, I'm using. This is one metal line. 
from each transistor I draw a meter line. There is a connection, please here. These are all metal conductor lines. And I have to have show a number of line intermediate columns, which are again metal line, but to represent ground. Okay, so what I'll be doing now in between, I'll put ground lines. <coughs> They're all metal lines. And I am putting another metal line here. <coughs> are all connected. So what I've done? I have just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve polylines are there, which are all rows, which form the rows of this matrix, whereas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 metal lines are there, which form the columns of the matrix, but these are this one, this one, this one, this, 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 and this. These are all nothing but the output lines of the inverters or because these are connected to the load transistors, so these lines nothing but are the outputs of the NOR gates. These are the pull down ground. Okay. Now I have to put transistors in the appropriate location. Please remember that at the intersection of each crossing between the output line and the poly line, there is a MOSFET underneath, but some of them are connected, some of them are not connected. For example, you just see now, I have to apply A at the input of NOR gate 1, A and B bar. <coughs> so how to do that here in this diagram? What I'll be doing simply, I'll have a cross cut here, cross cut here, and have a diffusion here between them and then I connect a poly from here, poly link from here. You just see what I have done. You know at the intersect of the poly and diffusion there is a transistor. It is always, this is the code of, you know, term, this is typical, you know, that one of the laws for forming the um, stick diagram. Whenever there is an intersection between the poly and diffusion, 
there is a transistor. So what I have done, bit, I have made a cross cut from this metal and gone into the diffusion. Do you follow what I have done? That means on the <coughs> in-plus diffusion, I have formed a small in-plus diffusion tub in the p-type silicon substrate, oxidized it, had small holes here, small windows here, and one side, on the either side, on which I have put this metal line. So between this metal line and the underlying diffusion, there is a connection. Exactly that thing I have done here. Then I have extended the polyline. <coughs> it, what does it indicate? It indicates that at this point there is a that means the signal A, the input A, is applied to the transistor at this location, to the MOSFET at this location. So this is nothing but an inverter. Individually, it is an inverter, is it not? Between this point and this point, which is nothing the output line and the ground line, there is an N MOSFET. And the input of this N MOSFET is nothing but A. Exactly the same thing. This is gate number one. Please remember this transistor one means this is the gate number one. And then I have also to apply B bar. So what I do? I take this B bar line and do the exactly the same thing. I make a cross cut here, cross cut here. Have a diffusion, diffusion between the two, diffusion link between the two, and make the extension of the polyline from B bar. This is a polyline extension. Please remember that. Is a small link of the polyline starting from this point. It goes towards it. That means at the intersection here, there is a transistor. And therefore, at this node, which is nothing but this one, this line, what we are getting? We are getting the function A bar B produced. Here, I am getting the function A bar B produced. Is it all right or not? Here, I am getting the function A bar be produced at this line. Similarly, I have to produce this number two gate. I have to apply A bar and B to produce A B bar here. I do that using number two transistor. This two transistor is nothing but the second gate. So I have to apply A bar first. That means between the second gate, exactly the same thing. I have a cross cut here and cross cut here, have a diffusion, and then a poly from this A bar. I do not know whether, it, whether it is visible properly or not. This is the, this emanates from this A bar line. So here I have connected, similarly I have to apply B. So I do the following. I have a cross cut here, cross cut here, put a diffusion link, and then extend the polyline like this. It is becoming clumsy for us. But please note, that is the technique. Between, I have to, so the sec at the second node, this line, what I am producing now? Simply A, B bar. This is being produced here. All right? See the gate number four, where I have to apply A bar, B bar to produce this function AB. And this is gate number four means this line. This gate number four, because this is the transistor, load transistor for the NOR gate four. NOR gate four. This is the NOR gate number four, whose load transistor is this one. And at the input, I have to apply A bar and B bar to produce A B at the output, which is nothing but the J node. That I am coming. So what you do, <coughs> A bar and B bar you have to connect here. So simply, you have a cross cut here and the adjacent ground line, have a diffusion link, and extend the poly like this. This is to have A bar and then B bar. This is the line. I have a cross cut here, cross cut here, a diffusion line, and then extension of the poly. So that at this point, you get AB. 
over this output line, I get AD. Then you see that these are the only gates, this one, this one, and this one. These are the only gates whose inputs are the input signal. These other gates actually derive signals from intermediate gates. Therefore, now I will draw them. Let me now come to the gate number three. At the input of which, I have to apply A bar B and A B bar. Now, how can I apply this? I, in fact, this A B bar, A bar B has to be raised to that G line. This is the G line. Somehow this A bar B has to be connected to the G line. Then only I can connect the appropriate gate. So first what I do, I connect that A bar B signal to the G line. And how can I do that? Simply putting a cross cut here. That A bar B I am bringing here to this G line. Otherwise it was isolated. Excepting for poly and diffusion, I assume, other lines, whenever I draw a cross position without any cross cut, it means they are isolated. But as soon as I put a cross, means it is now connected. And similarly, H is to be, go H is to be connected to A bar B. I do this first. Then this G and H are to be connected to the input of the gate number 3. What is gate number 3? This is the transistor. So what I do, simply I do the following. I have a cross cut here, cross cut here, a diffusion link and a small poly link from G. Similarly for H also, I do the same. I have a cross cut here, cross cut here, a diffusion link and a poly extension. So. At this line, automatically, you see what I'm getting produced at, at, the in, at the output of three. This is the output of three, which produces A nor exclusive nor B. At the output of this, you get A exclusive nor B, and which has to be connected to I line. So here, I get A exclusive or B, Inverse, exclusive nor B. At this this line produces therefore exclusive nor B. And this has to be connected to I line. I line. So what I do? Simply I come to this I and put a cross cut here. Produce and then raise it to the I line. Please remember that the diffusion is the bottom most line, bottom most line on the semiconductor then there is an oxide, then poly level, then there is another oxide, then metal level. That has to be kept <coughs> in memory. So whatever cross cuts I am showing, it is a bit intermediate. That, that, that produces, it's called via holes. I have to make some hole into the oxide, through into the oxide for connecting the different lines. In the stick diagram, I normally it is not usual to show the connection between all three lines. Sometimes that is also done. Diffusion, poly and metal, they are all joined together. But that normally we do not show in stick diagram kind of approach. That is, we have avoided in that kind of thing. Anyway, then you see that. So I have produced this I. You just see, I have brought I here. Then this I and C I bar has to be combined. Has to be applied to the input gate in the fifth gate. What is the fifth gate? This is the transistor. So what I do? I and C I bar. This is the fifth gate. One is I. Between this and ground, I have a diffusion link and a poly extension. And similarly, I have to apply CI bar here. Between this and ground, I have a diffusion link and a poly extension. And the output produces now this function, the second term of CO which is nothing but K. So this output, I'm not writing, it is, I, I'm writing just second, I'm writing second, this is the second term of the C0 function. And this is now, has to be, according to this diagram, this is nothing but K. This I have called K. So this one has to be connected to K. K is this line. This 
this is k all right now come to the fourth line output of this was ab fourth transistor output of this was ab and this must be connected to the j line according to this diagram so what i do i just put a cross cut here it comes to the j line then this j and k come k i have already produced am i correct what is k k line so j and k have to be inputted to 6k to produce co bar so what is the six transistor this is the cell. so j and k what is j line here so i have to put a six transistor a diffusion link and a poly extension and what is k this is the k a diffusion link and a poly extension and this one now produces the so called co bar 6 k output produces co bar the inversion the co complement of the carry out then it has to pass through another transistor uh, 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 CO. So CO bar has to be connected to, so CO bar, this is CO bar. CO bar has to be, um, sorry, this is CO bar. And you, con you connect it to this particular line. And then ultimately I want to get CO. So what I have to do? I have to use a seventh transistor use a cross here like this and sorry sorry from here i'm sorry this is not there sorry i'm just rubbing it out forget this part so this is a picture this one is not there and at the output here therefore i'm getting co This diagram would have been very difficult if I had drawn the ordinary way of drawing the circuit diagram, the wire diagram, normal wire diagram. The stick diagram has helped me to draw this diagram. Have you understood any, all of you? CO bar at the input of the last kit, it is just one transistor. It's nothing but an inverter. So you have done so. CO bar has been raised to this CO bar line. This line, the output line produces CO bar, but this I have called CO bar. So I have just, because I have raised it, or ra in fact not raised it, uh, I have connected it to the CO bar line, which is a poly line, which is the input to the next inverter to produce CO bar. So here you see the output is also available from the poly line, which is not the normal case. I have to have another uh, metal connect interconnect to show the output. That has to be done, yes, definitely. That has to be done, yes, definitely. Seven things. Yeah, that is necessary. Otherwise, you cannot get the signal out. Or, and I'm sorry, there is no need, sorry, there is no need of drawing this polyline. There is no need of drawing this polyline. This metal line could be taken out as the output. Yeah, you are right. I'm sorry. There is no need of drawing the CO line. This metal line itself would, would have given you output, CO output. So you see that um, you can compare now. I can give it as a problem to you. Same, the same uh, exclusive or, sorry, same carry out function of an adder. In fact, I have given it as a problem. I ask you to implement, I ask you to implement the adder circuit using the um, yeah, I think using the uh, oh no sorry in the Domino CMOS in the Domino CMOS example I ask you to find out to to implement the adder circuit simple adder circuit using Domino CMOS. What Domino CMOS, just adder is uh, for PL is meaningless just one function two function adder means there are two output function and that is not really suitable for you know that this uh, produce for having a PLA. But the Wienberger, you see that this appears to be a very complicated approach. Am I correct? 
just you have produced a single you are producing a single function not like pla where you are producing multiple so many output functions in terms of so many input variables here just for one function i have to dedicate such a big array is it is it not wasteful it may appear to be wasteful yes but this particular example which is a simplistic example which can be shown as an illustration in the class definitely it it can be said is a very very wasteful kind of endeavor as compared to normal pla but there are there are examples there are certain variations of functions involving multiple oper multi level operations where winberger array has been found to be a very al effective alternative to normal conventional pla approach this uh, this is not really that good frankly speaking uh, anyone can conclude that for doing this simple thing i have to dedicate a full array it appears to be rather bad but there are many many examples where such multi level operations are involved where winberger approach is very good this is an example which shows how the winberger is uh, implemented okay now in the winberger also case also there is a scope for folding just like pla in the winberger case also there is a scope for folding can you tell me in what way we can think of folding there it is possible to have row folding column folding and all these things but i can show you a simple demonstration of the column folding rather than row fold number of rows remaining the same but columns can be folded columns can be folded rows remaining the same the columns can be folded what i can do you can try yourself whether i will give you the problem to you instead of discussing in the class you assume that the columns are split each output this a bar b these are you can call it the intermediate product term intermediate product terms these are split into two halves into two and you assume that a b d are kind of a b d sorry number 1 2 and 4 this four gates i have called it a b c d in my other thing so 1 2 and 4 these four transistors main for three transistor main for 1 2 and 4 they are placed in the upper half here let me repeat the load transistors of the gates 1 2 and 4 you keep keep them in the upper half and the load transistors of the remaining we forget about 7 let us not bring 7 unnecessarily you can do it in inversion can be done afterward so and the remaining that is 3 5 and 6 the load transistors of the gates 3 5 and 6 keep them in the lower half okay and draw the output lines moving each other one from up to down the other from down to up keep the input lines the same more or less in the same uh, order the input lines and the node lines in the same order and try to connect them and you can use between the three columns i can just show you the configuration you try can try yourself problem aspect is in fact here is a horizontal aspect and these things are all so i'm just showing you what has to be done is you have a three transistors here like this from here you go downward i am calling them 1 2 and 4 this is ddd your a b c d etc is just as before this is a a a bar b b bar same thing as before as as i have done earlier 
then there is a break somewhere, but that at what point has to be break, you have to be decided. You have to decide. You have the other things. And similarly, you have transistors here connected. Okay? And intermediately here, you place a ground line. So these are for three, five, and six. If you not do not try them out immediately today itself, you will forget. Let me tell you that you should be otherwise you will be in trouble in the examination. It is a very simple thing, but if you do not just do it more or less today by today or tomorrow, you will forget things, and it will be difficult for you to carry on because I have so many other things to cover in the class. Okay? Then that is your responsibility now to cover to a greater extent, to practice the problems which I'm going on giving to you. You're su sufficiently matured now. So you see that you have to now show A, B, B, etc. all these 12 input lines and nodes, whatever I've shown horizontally as before, only the columns have been split into two halves. But I have not really shown where I have made the split, where I have made the split. You have to appropriately split them in proper location to perform the various functions, various intermediate functions, which ultimately give you CO bar on CO. So you are make, making many intermediate functions, which ultimately <coughs> give you this or this. That has to be done here. So this is what is called column folding. of Wien Burger Ellis. Now this was a very interesting uh, academic matter. This Wien Burger array was ultimately found. It was very interesting, academically at least. But from practical point of view, ultimately it was found that this is not a really very good approach. And therefore, um, PLA is normal PLA as well as folded PLA, whatever I've discussed so far in the last classes. They are, they are more uh, practical and they are more useful than Wienberger. Wienberger has application only in very specialized cases where perhaps a normal PLA approach. So if, if you have to produce a very complicated one function, but very complicated feature, which, op which involves lot of lot of multi-level operations. In that case, Wienberger is a good approach rather than, but here again, you see the Dan, Domino, CMOS, and all other competitors are there, you know? You have to make a, but the advantage of Wienberger is, or any PLA or Wienberger, these are regular structures. Design-wise and fabrication-wise, they are simpler than the normal dedicated kind of. Dominosomas is not a regular structure. Please remember, all the CMOS, the static MOS, static logic or dynamic logic, whatever I've discussed, they are not regular structures. But this one is a regular structure. That is the main advantage of uh, any array approach. Like this, similarly, the gate arrays and other things. You see, there is another, I think I have told you in the last class, there is another approach called feedback reduced PLA or AFR PLA. Feedback reduced PLS. The same function, same thing which I have discussed. This last example, I could also represent like this in the in, 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 in terms of PLA. Let us see like this.
this is the same thing I have redrawn in this fashion, where you can see that this is nothing but one PLA because you, what is PLA? PLA you, it consists of n plane and odd planes. So basically, and here this is n plane and this is odd plane, and ultimately there is one PLA here. You can represent this function by PLA, a simple example, and which is connected to the input of another PLA, and ultimately have you drawn it? Rather, I can draw it here itself. The same thing I can draw now like this. You just see, there is a PLA number one, and there is a PLA number two. And inputs are here are A, A bar. B, B bar, and the output from the PLA goes to this input, and similarly, at here, you also apply the other inputs. And here, at the output, you get this. Again, this is a very small example. There may be, I have shown just for one, one function, there may be a multiple functions involved, only for one function. This is the same carry out operation from the signals A, B, and C, I. And the whole thing, it can be divided. Therefore, what I am trying to say that a big, if I want to perform, or if I want to produce the PLA, of a set of functions, then I can divide them into a number of blocks, number of smaller periods, and then interconnect them suitably to produce the final function. Can you tell me what is the usefulness of this approach? Now, PLA actually, I told you that if you want a dedicated PLA, custom chip, that is very expensive. For example, folding, etc., makes the PLA more expensive. But regular PLAs are less expensive because you are just in an array, in an array structure. Simply, you have to configure the array, personalize the array. But again, due to cost or due to some reason, you you have a good stock of PLAs, which are small PLAs, not large matrices. The stock of PLAs which you have with you. You have got it from a company, and you can personalize it by using, say, the so-called field programmable approach, which I discussed earlier. But these are small PLAs. But your requirement, ultimate requirement, is very huge. So what you can do, I can make use of the smaller PLAs in the manner I have shown here, interconnect them appropriately to produce the output, ultimately the set of functions which I desire. <laughs> And this is what is sometimes called feedback reduced PLAs or FR PLAs. It's a very you know it's an interesting example of there's nothing new here. Only thing is just as I told you, if I don't have a very large computer to handle a huge matrix, what I do? I partition it. And then in a suitable way, I use a PC for my work. I cannot use a PC for hundred by hundred kind of matrix operations. But I can always handle 20 by 20, 30 by 30 matrices. And I can suitably partition it. There is fish partitioning scheme. Same same approach has been followed. And in fact, it is done everywhere. Whenever a problem is very big, we have a tendency to fragment it, to partition into smaller problems, and ultimately judiciously combine the results to get the output, final output. Exactly that thing has been done here. So these are the examples of. PLAs, which I wanted to discuss in the class. At the end, I'll give some problems to be worked out. Design a PLA, some, some problems please check. Number one, apart from whatever I have given in the class, design a PLA to satisfy
some kind of things. It have repetition of the one zero zero. This kind of problem can be always given. Given the truth table, realize the PLA. And you may be asked to realize the normal PLA, reduced PLAs, and all these things, folded PLAs, etc. So one kind of example. Then draw the stick diagram of the above PLA. and draw the corresponding precharged <coughs> dynamic CMOS PLA. Let me give the these problems today. I'll give you some more problems afterwards. <coughs> So I'll just